This is Community Forum, a public affairs presentation of McKenzie River Broadcasting. Each week, we learn about issues affecting our community with your host, Tracy Berry. Cancer touches many lives, and for people who have survived cancer, it can sometimes be a challenge getting your mind, your body, your emotions back on track. And that's where Live Strong at the YMCA comes in. The program started more than a decade ago at a handful of Ys across the country. The Eugene Family YMCA began offering it two years ago. It brings together cancer survivors in small support groups at no cost to the participant. We learn more about it this morning on Community Forum. Our guests are Colleen Glick, the program's coordinator, and Lisa Milton, one of the instructors. Colleen and Lisa, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Colleen, let's start with an overview. Give us sort of the background and what this program is. Well, the Livestrong Foundation and the YMCA of the USA came together in 2007 and started this program. So this is a nationwide program and it's evidence-based. The foundation was looking for a partner who does mind, body, and soul work, and that's what the YMCA is all about. We know that cancer affects your body physically, but it also affects you emotionally and mentally. It can be extremely exhausting, it can be extremely confusing, and so when the foundation came to the Y and said, we'd love to offer a program and help Help cancer survivors. We know that exercise is the one way to prevent recurrence. Would you guys like to partner up with us? And the Y of the USA said, yes, we would. Well, and, and Lisa, you're one of the instructors. Talk about what that really involves. So we meet for 12 weeks with 12 cancer survivors. We do a comprehensive fitness program that includes strength building. We work on flexibility, range of motion, and we increase their cardiovascular fitness. And so um, in addition to working on their body, we also invite in guest speakers and we have demonstrations from other kinds of exercise fitness professionals in town. And so we just um, really give them a full taste of everything that can help them rebuild their strength and stamina so that they can return to their lives and feel much better. Now, I've heard of other programs that have pieces of these things, mm -hmm. but it sounds like you're saying you, you feel you have a much more comprehensive approach? We, we definitely do. Um, we go through a training that teaches us about um, what cancer survivors go through during their treatments, and so we work with their doctors and um, sometimes their physical therapists, and we meet them, um, we take up their goals and their wishes, and then we also meet with those doctors and we come up with a plan that is individually set for them so that they can grow stronger and feel better. Well, and, and uh, Colleen, you were saying 2007 was really about when this program started, yes. so now there's data and information coming from a lot of different sites, I would guess, than that have been doing this for years. Yes, we do have uh, data. It comes from the very beginning till now. Each Y that brings this program does a 12-week assessment. So at the very first part, we do a physical assessment as well as an emotional whole body assessment that the participants do complete. At the end of the 12 weeks, we rerun all of the same assessments and they do all of their whole body assessments and with that information we can see the growth the changes where maybe they still need to do a little bit of work where they reach their goals and because everybody that's running this program across the country uh, is doing all these same assessments we're able to say that this is an evidence-based program and we can show and there are journals that have been written uh, that prove that this program is successful well, and I'm kind of curious from your perspective, Lisa, you, you're dealing with people when they first come through the door, they're starting this, then you see them, you know, weeks later. What, I know everyone's case is different, but mm -hmm. what are some of the key changes that you see in the people you're working with? This is probably one of the most rewarding parts of our job. Um, we feel so honored to do this work when people come in at different stages of their recovery. We have a philosophy of start low and go slow. And so we really meet the person where they are. And there is a lot of feelings of the body has betrayed the person or there's feelings of grief. There's a lot of things that are um, on, on the edge or showing when they first walk through the door. Um, and we really enjoy within even the first month getting to see people start to blossom. Um, we see people not only starting to feel better and reporting less fatigue, they also start to um, smile a little bit more. Um, we start seeing a little bit more zip in their step, as, as corny as that sounds. Um, we know that scientifically, we know that that they are going to make big changes in their bodies and and we know that because we see the numbers 
but there's something beautiful about watching a person um, really start to reclaim their life again and you start to hear them report you know, I was able to play with my grandkids on the floor today, or I was able to go for a hike, or um, grocery shopping wasn't so hard for me. So all of those things are, are very rewarding. You know, cancer takes many forms, and it has many different levels of effect. Everyone's different. So how do you, how do you deal with that? You can't really do a true one-size-fits-all approach, or, or can you? No, we can't. Uh, that's why it's important to get the information from their doctors. They get a medical release. If they're working with a physical therapist, we get them to do a release for us as well. We take a nice long interview with them. It's about an hour and a half. We talk about their journey. We look at their health history. Uh, we take all that information plus that first round of assessments that we do with them. That's how we create their program. So the beautiful thing is that there's 12 people working together inside of a group, but each individual gets their own program that maybe they have balance issues, maybe they have neuropathy, maybe they have vision issues. We never know what we're getting with each person. And so each cancer story is different, even if it's the same cancer as the person mm -hmm. sitting next to you, their journey has been different. And the way the drugs or the side effects come to their body may be completely different than somebody else. Yeah, um, it is really a unique program because it is a group fitness program, however, um, we don't know of any others that really are able to give you an individualized program that works just on what your needs are um, and working closely with your medical staff. And so that's been a really different thing for us. We both have worked in different fitness fields. And so this has really been a different experience, um, being able to really handcraft each person's uh, workouts and that they're also able to give us feedback. You know, we along the way, just because someone has cancer doesn't mean that they also didn't hurt their shoulder 10 years ago. And so there's always new things popping up like, gosh, this is really aggravating this. And so um, we're always going back to the drawing table and making up new new things and um, referring to we have a wonderful support staff at the Y that works with us and uh, we have medical providers in town who are willing to answer any questions we have so we've been really fortunate to be supported by our community. Well and it's it's interesting because people do have these then personal sort of fitness efforts and workouts and things like that but having the context of the group makes it makes it different in that sense. There's this beautiful bonding that happens amongst these people so we were very surprised in that first session that we did in 2016. We knew that it was going to work. We knew it was evidence-based. We knew that they are going to make progress. The whole 12 weeks, we were nervous and they kept saying, they say it's going to work <laughs> and it did work. All those things did prove to be true. But the things that were beautiful that we weren't expecting was like the person blossoming, somebody who comes in a little hunched over, a little quieter, a little bit not sure of themselves. And through the 12 weeks, they stand taller, they stand more open, they smile more. The group also bonds, which we didn't realize that would necessarily happen either. They all have this moment of PTS where they've heard the words, you have cancer. And so they've all been affected by that. And when you bring a group of them together, this is not a therapy group. We're not gonna sit down and talk about cancer, but they talk amongst themselves. And so mm -hmm. Lisa and I may not even know that they've shared their story with each other. When somebody is sick or somebody is absent for some reason, the whole group takes a little step back and goes, where's Joe? Yeah. And we're like, oh, he's just out today. You know, we know why he's out and maybe he's sick, who knows the reason, but we go, oh, he's just out and they all get this kind of look on their face. And it's a little bit of that PTS. It's a little bit of, mm -hmm. oh, I know he was having a PET scan or, oh, I know he was seeing his doctor. I hope everything's okay. And so there's this beautiful um, camaraderie amongst them and they make friendships and they care about each other. And then they go home and they call each other. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Is everything okay? And so outside of getting that workout, outside of getting stronger, which are all beautiful things, they find these people who aren't from a therapy group. They didn't sit around and tell their story, but they have this beautiful friendship that gets created and continues. We've seen it continue with our yeah. alumni group. So it's really wonderful, beautiful work. And there is an alumni group. Yes. Yeah, so we realized after our first first or second session, like, wow, we really need to expand and, and, and really honor these bonds that they've made. Um, so we have had different uh, potlucks, we've had different lunches where they come together, and then we get a little nervous, like, well, gosh, um, we've had eight groups now, how about if people don't come from their group, will they feel comfortable? Um, but what we have found is that 
there's a kind of a magical moment. They all get together and and they really enjoy each other's company from all the different groups. Um, we've had people in their 30s in our group. We've had people in their 80s. Um, and there, you know, you don't know when you get a group together like how that uh, synergy is going to roll out. But it's been really wonderful to watch um, how they develop new new friendships. We also added a class. Um, our second year, we added a class that's open to all members at the Y, but we call it Reclaim Strength. And we view it as a class that's for those who have had a little medical curveball. Um, and it's about a half hour long strength building class. And many of our alumni attend that class after they're done with their session. And they're able to keep in touch with us. Um, and we get a chance to keep that relationship going. Well, and someone listening to this might say, okay, I or someone I care about, they're either living with cancer or they've survived cancer. Uh, how do I get involved in this and what should they know? Simple email. Send me an email, livestrong at eugeneymca.org. That simple. Once they send that email, I put them on a list. If we have openings, then they pop right in. But typically I do have a wait list. When I say I have a wait list, people kind of freak out a little bit, like how long could that mean? I never know. When I start this new session, which we're doing in September, I've already gone through 12 people on the wait list who something's come up and they can't make this session. So I'm working my way to people who might have called me a month ago now. So I have a wait list. It's fluid, but the email is the first way to start. I send you some information out. And then when it's time for you to come into the program, we do an interview and go from there. And you're already doing some of the interviews now, but I get the mm -hmm. sense that's something of a continuous process. It is. We have three sessions a year. We have one that begins in January, another in April, and then one in September. So um, we do a lot of interviews throughout. And then if people can't fit into our Live Strong at the YMCA program, we also sometimes work with people one-on-one -on -one and do some personal training with one of us um, so that if, if that time doesn't work for them or if they can't do that, we have other options as well. Sometimes people want to come and start doing something even before the group begins. So we have lots of options available. Mm -hmm. What about time commitment, the, the person's responsibilities, and the cost? What do they need to know about that? It is 24 sessions, so 12 weeks, an hour and a half session. So it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, 2.15 to 3.45. We do ask that people commit to all 24 of those sessions. We know people get sick. We know that happens. But if you're going to take a vacation, we're going to put you in a session where we know you're going to be around. Because it's evidence-based, we want you to meet your goals. It's not about us. But if you're only there for half the sessions, you're not going to feel as accomplished at the end of it. The cost is there is no cost. We mm -hmm. offer this as um, a passion project that we do at our Y. We know cancer is expensive. The Livestrong Foundation, when they came to the Y of the USA, said we would like it to be at no cost to participants, and the Y has honored that. In addition, our Y here in Eugene, our membership director, has graciously given us free membership for three months. So when someone comes into the program, if they have a spouse or children living with them in their household or even a caregiver, they can bring that person in. They mm -hmm. get to do their own workout. They can meet with a trainer, and they can spend those three months working out and getting healthier. Sometimes that's very helpful to the cancer survivor because it gives them someone else who's doing this similar kind of change. We love that we offer that because Tuesdays and Thursdays, they belong to Lisa and I. We are their workout for 90 minutes. And we say that flat out to everybody. You belong to me and Lisa on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And it's so we can monitor you and so we can see what you're yeah. doing and know where we maybe need to make corrections or changes. And, and I would guess that twice a week you really can monitor people's skills and they feel more committed to it because it's not just a once a week thing. Oh, definitely. No, and they can come because they're full members of the Y for the three months. They can come every other day of the week and go to a yoga class, go to a water episode class, you know, come in and go for a swim, whatever they'd like to do. They and their family have a, f a family membership for those three months. Is it something where their health care provider needs to sign off on it first to refer them or is it just they've heard about it, they contact you? How does that work? They can hear about it and contact us. Uh, sometimes the doctors mm -hmm. ask us to reach out. Um, we prefer that people actually reach out to us directly because it means that they're ready to make that step. We know your doctor is going to tell you to do a lot of things. <laughs> and at the end of your cancer journey, you're exhausted and you've heard a lot of advice from a lot of people and you just want to take ownership of your body again and ownership of your life. So when someone reaches out to us, that says to us that they're ready and they want to make this commitment. No. Well, if all else fails or if people are driving and don't have time to write down the email, they could just call the Eugene YMCA and say, hey, uh, tell me about this Live Strong at the YMCA program. But once again, that email address is livestrong at eugeneymca.org. 
And, I, you know, I was thinking about it. The, the Eugene Family YMCA years ago started a program for people living with diabetes. And it sounds like it was in some ways a similar kind of structure. So there are some of these larger mm-hmm. health initiatives going on there right now. Preventive medicine and chronic conditions, that's where the why is at right now. We, from a national level as well as locally, realize that if we can do the work on the front side, people can have healthier, longer lives. They can push off side effects. Sometimes they can even prevent. So with our diabetes prevention program, they come in, it's a one-year program, and they learn how to not get diabetes. That's the goal. And so your doctor says, hey, you were right on the cusp and you were on the edge of that. And so that program helps them to stay on this side of the fence, which is important. We also have a program called Enhanced Fitness, and that's for people who have had strokes or arthritis issues. Uh, That class can use things like chairs and hand weights so you don't have to be up and moving or worrying that someone's gonna crash into you. It's very controlled. Uh, Again, another evidence-based program. Uh, We have You Can Gym, which is also in our healthy living area. And that's for anybody who is wheelchair bound or maybe has to walk with assistance. Uh, We do have a program where they can come into our Y and work with the trainer and then the trainer oversees the floor while that group is in there. So we are all about preventative and chronic care. And we really think that this is the way the world is going. And we know it is because insurance companies are keeping an eye on the why and looking at what the whys are doing. Mm -hmm. And so they're willing to start uh, connecting with our whys, paying for some of these programs. So we think there's going to be a big shift in what we call healthy living programs across the country with the whys help and with the insurance companies coming together and noticing prevention is amazing. Well, and Lisa, for you as an instructor on fitness, health, and lifestyle, what's it mean to have a really motivated group of people who and, and who are making that commitment uh, and, and being able to just see those changes at a very, a very small and in a larger sense, too? We get to meet some of the most dynamic people. Those who are drawn to this program tend to, to have um, so much to offer, and um, we just feel so grateful that we get to meet them and that we get to spend time with people who Um, When you see what they've gone through on paper, it's sometimes a little startling. There's been some really hard and dark times um, that they've had to go through. And so we really, although the the group is definitely drawn together by something that is difficult, we really try to make the time that they spend with us be filled with a lightness and some levity and and a lot of laughter um, because we know that there's plenty of times for the for the hard parts, and we really try to um, emphasize having a good time and enjoying themselves and enjoying being back in their body again. Um, and to get to just watch that transformation over a 12-week period is is amazing. Um, and, and then stories that we get to hear afterwards, too, when people keep in touch and they tell us a few years later, we recently had somebody who has been out of out of the Y for a few weeks, and so I had checked in with her, and she'd been out hiking with her kids and, and with her grandkids, and um, and and just to know that you played a small part, that we just walked alongside and, and gave some tools to people who are really going to work hard um, to really regain their life. Final thoughts or anything either of you want to add? Earlier this year, we were awarded a grant from the Knight Cancer Institute's Community Partnership Program. We were assigned with a big task how to get more men involved in a group fitness program. Um, Men tend to not join groups as much. That's just what we've found to be true. We have found that those men who have joined our Live Strong at the YMCA program have been some of the most committed members we've ever seen. They enjoy it. They love it. They come back. They'll come They'll come and speak to groups with us. Um, they really enjoy the program, but it's a little harder to get them in through the door. Um, most of them had to have maybe a PT or a wife or someone really work on them to go and join our program. So um, when we were commissioned by the OHSU program to do a little more partnership with cancer survivors um, that have gone through primarily prostate cancer is what our grant is for, but we really are trying to reach out to more men in our community. Um, And so to that end, we've had a focus group with several male cancer survivors. We recently spoke to a prostate cancer support group in town, and um, we're just really trying to reach out and get to know more male cancer survivors and, and invite them into our program. On September 27th, we are going to have a Prostate Cancer Awareness Day at the YMCA. And right now we're lining up speakers and we're going to have some different groups in town that support cancer survivors come and and have tables and information. So we're really excited about it. It's going to be something really new for our organization. 
I just think it's a beautiful, amazing program. And like Lisa was saying, um, men do get something out of it. They are not joiners typically, and there is no judgment in that. Men and women yeah. reach out after cancer and different different ways. But don't be afraid to come by and see us. We have a really good time. It's very thoughtful. We really want you to succeed, and we are there to, I think Lisa said earlier, walk beside you. We're not there to boss you around. We're not there to tell you what to do. We're to say, here's your options. Here's ways that we can help you achieve the goals, and here's things that we see that we know that you need to be working on. Um, but it's very fluid, and we have a great time, and they get a chance to meet a whole lot of different instructors in the Y, and maybe you never want to lift a weight again, but I bet we could find other classes <laughs> yeah. that would be appealing to yes. you. Um, that's one of the beautiful things about the program is that we have five weeks where we invite guest instructors and guest speakers from the community to come in, and so we have a chance to try out pickleball, and we have a chance to try out yoga, and tai chi, and water aerobics, and we bring different people from the community oncology naturopaths and oncology physical therapists and a nutritionist and they come in and they speak to the group so it's a very comprehensive program not only physically emotionally mentally but we also bring in all these other pieces that people maybe don't know are in the community and so it's wonderful to sort of be that center of the wheel and to be able to reach out to different resources make sure they know about us make sure we know about them and then we can share that information with the cancer survivors in the community so we're blessed we're very lucky to do this program well, some important stuff for men and women who are cancer survivors in the community offered by the Eugene family YMCA. Colleen Glick.